Hello, I'm Dr. Jack Wolfson, cardiologist, founder of Natural Heart Doctor, the home of the 100-year heart. And if sleep apnea and AFib are issues for you, you are in the right place. Are you exhausted, experiencing brain fog, weight gain, headaches, and irritability? You may have shared these symptoms with your doctor and been told that you have depression. However, you might just be one of the 80% of the population living with undiagnosed obstructive sleep apnea. If you have AFib, your odds of developing the sleep disorder are even higher. Let's dig into the relationship between sleep apnea and AFib. What is obstructive sleep apnea? Sleep apnea occurs when the soft tissues in the nose, mouth, and the back of the throat collapse. This means that air cannot flow in and out of the lungs. When this happens, there are frequent pauses of breathing also known as apnea. Individuals with sleep apnea rarely get the restorative sleep needed for health. How do you know if you have sleep apnea? Well, those with obstructive sleep apnea often experience disrupted sleep and many don't even know that they have this condition. Chronic snoring is the hallmark symptom of sleep apnea, although snoring is not the only indicator of this problem. Other signs include daytime fatigue or need for a nap or even falling asleep unexpectedly, sudden or startled awakening from sleep, disrupted breathing while sleeping, waking with a sore throat or dry mouth, morning headaches, mood changes such as anxiety, depression, or irritability concentration difficulties, and decreased sex drive or libido. What causes sleep apnea, you may be wondering? Well, the most significant risk factor for sleep apnea is being overweight or obese. Extra weight around the neck can cause compression of the upper airway. Just a 10% gain in weight is associated with a six-fold increased risk of obstructive sleep apnea. Unfortunately, the relationship between obstructive sleep apnea and obesity is cyclical. The additional weight contributes to sleep apnea, and sleep apnea then contributes to the weight gain. Other risk factors for sleep apnea include tobacco use, alcohol use, and airway abnormalities such as enlarged tonsils. How is sleep apnea diagnosed? That's a great question. The gold standard for diagnosing obstructive sleep apnea is a sleep study test called a polysomnogram, or PSG. This test, typically conducted overnight in a sleep lab, monitors sleep cycles, oxygen levels, and vital signs to determine an obstructive sleep apnea diagnosis. This test can also be performed comfortably in your own home. What does sleep apnea do to your heart? Well, it does plenty. Oxygen is life, and depriving the body can create many problems. The decreased oxygen levels that occur due to obstructive sleep apnea result in more than just morning grogginess. Sleep apnea has detrimental effects on the heart. The lack of oxygen that occurs at night causes an increase in blood pressure as the body tries to compensate for this respiratory stoppage or apnea. According to research, obstructive sleep apnea increases the risk of heart failure by 140% and coronary artery disease by 30% and certainly increases the risk for conditions like atrial fibrillation. For some, sleep apnea also impacts the lungs, contributing to a condition called pulmonary hypertension or high blood pressure in the lungs blood vessels. If left untreated, pulmonary hypertension can lead to congestive heart failure. AFib and sleep apnea, it's a real problem. The relationship between sleep apnea and abnormal heart rhythms, such as AFib, is well established. A recent 2020 study of patients with atrial fibrillation found that nearly 83% also had sleep apnea. The same researchers found that those with more advanced obstructive sleep apnea had more severe AFib symptoms. While it's not entirely clear if sleep apnea causes AFib directly, increasing evidence suggests this possible link. 
The lower levels of oxygen, increased inflammation, and changes in chest pressure could all cause changes to the heart that contribute to AFib. Regardless of the cause, it's abundantly clear that sleep apnea affects AFib. Individuals with both conditions are more likely to experience additional episodes of AFib compared to those who do not have obstructive sleep apnea. How do I treat sleep apnea? Well, as with all health issues, it's best to identify the root cause and start there. By doing this, you not only treat the condition, but could actually cure it. If you have a modifiable risk factor for obstructive sleep apnea, begin by eliminating the risk. For example, if you are overweight or obese, you should focus efforts on losing those extra pounds. If sinus congestion contributes to your sleep apnea, you may consider, a low, consider lowering inflammation by changing your diet. Other lifestyle changes include eliminating tobacco and the excessive use of alcohol. The most common treatment for sleep apnea is positive airway pressure device. This mask or machine keeps pressure into the lungs. This is the most common thing that we would typically use. Other treatments of sleep apnea do include oral appliances, which is like a retainer or a bite guard that goes in to help. Other things like positional therapy, depending on do you sleep on your left side or your right side or your back or on your stomach, those can also help. Raising the head with a wedge pillow can be helpful as well. Ultimately, some people do require surgery, but fortunately, I have never sent anyone to surgery for this particular condition. Undoubtedly, we can always help. Can CPAP make AFib worse? While CPAP is used by over 8 million people each year, many struggle with compliance with this cumbersome device. New research is calling into question the effectiveness as of CPAP as a tool to lower cardiac complications. Once again, if you're not taking care of the cause, you're not going to find the cure. A recent report found little evidence to prove that CPAP reduces the rates of stroke, heart attack, or other cardiovascular problems, including death. So ultimately, we ask ourselves, does CPAP reduce the risk of AFib? While some research illustrates the positive benefits of CPAP for heart problems, not all experts agree. A recent 2021 study examined the relationship between CPAP and AFib and concluded that the use of the device did not reduce or prevent AFib. As with all medical interventions, there are risks to using a CPAP machine and some of those risks could worsen AFib symptoms. To make the CPAP more comfortable to use, the air is heated and moistened, creating a welcoming environment for organisms such as fungus, yeast, molds. These are highly detrimental to your health and undoubtedly are linked to AFib. There are cases where individuals have become ill from their CPAP machine as mold and other microorganisms are sometimes the cause of AFib. It is possible that CPAP could make your AFib worse. So what we need to do is address the cause and that will lead to the cure. Now the link between AFib and sleep apnea is indisputable. The two work hand in hand to destroy health. Quality sleep is essential for the heart, giving your systems a chance to rest and repair. Sleep apnea withholds life-giving oxygen from the body, setting off a whole host of health problems, possibly including AFib. The good news is that many of the things that you can do to heal sleep apnea might also help with AFib. Weight loss, dietary changes to reduce inflammation, and ensuring that the air you breathe is clean are all strategies to minimize the risk of both conditions. Our bodies are designed for optimum health given the right conditions. Getting sleep right is a huge step towards your 100-year heart. At first glance, atrial fibrillation appears to be a heart condition and sleep apnea a lung and airway condition. While it's true that these diseases manifest themselves in those organs, they are intricately linked. Moreover, the underlying cause of both disorders is the same. Therefore, it is entirely possible to cure both conditions by treating the root cause. And this cause is inflammation. Now, food is one of the best cures for inflammation. After all, the father of medicine, Hippocrates, is best known for saying, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. 
Food is the best medicine to combat inflammation, with certain foods being more effective than others. Consuming the following foods is certain to bring down the heat or the inflammation in your body. Fatty fish and seafood. Omega-3 fatty acids are well known for their inflammation fighting ability. Fatty fish is packed with two critical omega-3s, EPA and DHA, that you can only get from eating seafood. According to studies, foods high in these two fatty acids lower inflammation, thus reducing the risk of heart disease, atrial fibrillation, and even death. While there are multiple ways that eating fish helps reduce inflammation, recent research finds that omega-3s reduce inflammation by increasing special molecular mediators whose job is to fight and destroy bacteria and get rid of the dead cells. Unfortunately, we can't make omega-3 fatty acids. We have to get them through our diet. Plants contain some omega-3s, but they're not very effective. Salmon, sardines, anchovies contain the highest levels and also avoid environmental toxins and metals. Other good foods include scallops, shrimp, oysters, crab, etc. Try adding smoked salmon or any kind of seafood to your eggs for a healthy breakfast addition. Coconuts. The, tree, the coconut tree often is called the, the tree of life, is a source of food, medicine, shelter. The coconut oil made from that is often pressed from the coconut meat and is, is just a fantastic addition to your diet. Research has shown that coconut oil works to reduce inflammation naturally. In 2010, a study found that coconut oil had a pronounced anti-inflammatory effect the same study also found that coconut oil reduced pain and fever, which are signs of inflammation. A more recent study concluded that consuming coconut oil decreased inflammation markers and led to better blood glucose levels. Some people are hesitant to add coconut to their diet given its high saturated fat in, uh, levels. It's a total mistake. Do not be misled by the propaganda. I suggest you do this. Add coconut oil when you are cooking vegetables, meat, seafood. It's a fantastic option. You can even add to your morning coffee for a little bit of extra flavor and a good boost of healthy fats. Herbs and spices. Feeling sick often results in a trip to the pharmacy, but did you know that you already have a pharmacy right in your kitchen cabinet? That's right. Those herbs and spices are more than just simple flavor enhancers. They are some of the very best anti-inflammatory products in the world. Turmeric, for example, is widely known for its anti-inflammatory benefits. Its main component, curcumin, gives it its yellow color and has hundreds of different studies showing benefit. In 2019, a study found that curcumin worked as well as non-steroidals like ibuprofen, etc. for arthritis with fewer side effects. Other standouts include cinnamon, oregano, rosemary, cloves, and so many more. Don't forget, add fresh cilantro, parsley, and even turmeric to your eggs in the morning. Avocados. There's so much to love about avocados, I actually call it the avocardio. It's extremely anti-inflammatory. It contains high amounts of monounsaturated fats, mainly oleic acid, which research shows has anti-inflammatory properties. A 2013 study found that adding avocado slices to a hamburger significantly reduced inflammation markers. And another recent study found promise in using the avocado seed as an anti-inflammatory food. So do this. Add avocado to most of your meals. You can even add it to your morning smoothie for great texture and some additional healthy fats. Nuts and seeds. A quick glance at the nutrition facts around nuts and seeds reveals that with few exceptions, most contain much more omega-6 fatty acids than they do omega-3s. Since the omega-6 to omega-3 ratio is already too high in our modern diet, shouldn't nuts then be unhealthy? Well, the quick answer is no. Nuts are incredibly beneficial when it comes to their anti-inflammatory properties. Nuts and seeds contain numerous health-promoting nutrients that contribute to lower inflammation, including monounsaturated fats, vitamin E, B vitamins, and many other nutrients and antioxidants to reduce inflammation. Studies have shown that nut eaters live longer, less heart attacks, less inflammation. 
walnuts, almonds, hazelnuts, pecans, pistachios are just some of the many nuts in addition to chia, flax, and sesame that are also excellent. Not a big fan of peanuts, avoid those as they are legume. And don't forget, sprinkle the nuts and seeds onto your favorite salad, preferably sprout your nuts and seeds prior to consumption. Garlic and onions. While you may not want to start this trend right before a close encounter with another person, garlic and onions are excellent additions to your anti-inflammatory diet. Both are members of the Allium family, foods that have been shown to protect against cancer, heart disease, and inflammation. In 2021, they found that onion consumption is as effective as other pharmaceuticals for lowering inflammation. Garlic also has that same capabilities and is a potent anti-inflammatory which helps to reduce high blood pressure and protect against heart disease. Add garlic and onions to your diet is easy. Again, you can put it into your salad dressing, put it into different dishes that you consume. Excellent benefit amongst garlic and onions. Green leafy vegetables. We all remember our parents telling us to eat your spinach to grow strong and healthy. Turns out they were onto something. Green leafy vegetables, specifically dark leafy greens, are packed with vitamins and nutrients that help combat inflammation in the body. A recent study found that diets rich in leafy greens are associated with lower inflammation as CRP, and individuals who followed a diet rich in spinach, kale, collard, Swiss chard, bok choy saw their CRP plummet tremendously. Add these to, of course, your smoothies, add it to a salad, many different options to get that into your diet. Eggs. You might be surprised to see eggs on a list of anti-inflammatory foods. After all, so many people have been telling us for years to avoid eggs. Actually, eggs improve lipids and they lower inflammation. These are very positive things about eggs, which essentially is a cocoon for a baby chicken that contains all the vitamins and minerals needed for those animals to come to life. Don't forget, choose the highest quality pasture-raised eggs from healthy hens, which are proven to be higher in vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, and healthy omega-3s. Do this. Scramble up your eggs, fry your eggs, hard boil your eggs, eat the eggs raw, throw them into a smoothie. All good. Berries. What did our paleo ancestors likely enjoy for dessert? If they could find them, it would be berries. Berries are nature's natural sweet treat. Berries have been widely studied for their antioxidant properties, which with hundreds of studies revealing that they're incredible inflammation fighters. Bountiful in anthocyanins, an antioxidant with powerful anti-inflammatory properties, berries top the list of foods you should add to your diet. Studies show that blueberries increase natural killer cells, thus lowering inflammation. Research also shows promise in using blackberries to reduce obesity-induced inflammation. As a snack or treat at any time, add in some berries into your diet. Organs and nose-to-tail nutrition. Organs are nature's multivitamin, including liver. Liver is one of the most nutrient-dense foods in the world. Get liver into your diet. You can cook liver, raw liver, free-range grass-fed animals. That's the key. We'll give you all the nutrients you need to lower down inflammation. Address the cause, fix the symptoms. We have things so mixed up in conventional medicine. You have a headache, take an aspirin. You have sleep apnea, use this CPAP machine. You have AFib, take this pill or have a surgery. We rarely ask the why. While there are times that medications and interventions are appropriate, they fail to address the root cause of the symptom in the first place. The true key to health is getting to the root cause of the problem. By addressing the root cause, symptoms often, seemingly miraculously, disappear. Thanks for being here, and as always, eat well, live well, think well, and cheers to your 100-year heart.